Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> so. I'm Roy. <laughs> Go ahead. I, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, introduce the, the, the handheld microphone throws me off. Um, this is Roy. No, He's. Oh. Ooh. Okay, nice. Yeah. Ooh. Yes, uh, so I'll take you to uh, this left list. <laughs> I'm Roy, I work with Wunderkraut, I work in Belgium and the Netherlands, I am a Drupal UX designer, I contribute to Core, my big break was the Views UI, so you can blame the three columns, etc. there on me. Um, some stuff for the uh, Drupal 8 has been the star guide, and we've redesigned the content creation page and the modules page, so I specialize in interaction design things. And I like to apply that to Drupal core and country. The last line can probably safely be ignored. Um, <laughs> yes. I'm Jeff Eaton. Um, I'm with Lullabot. I'm a digital strategist there. Um, I did a lot of like core hacking and spawning off of lots of miscellaneous Drupal contrib modules in the uh, pre-Drupal 7 core days. I mostly have lived in contrib since then. Um, if anyone remembers the small core hashtag, I'm to blame. Um, a lot of my time is spent uh, doing architecture work and content strategy for um, large like publishing and media clients now. But I also end up talking to lots of friends and small orgs that want to that decide they want to use Drupal because it's all full of cool things, but it has a learning curve roughly equivalent to a barbed wire fence. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit, sort of obliquely. Um, this is sort of what I like to think of as the tool that people want when they get Drupal. It does all kinds of cool stuff. It can lift heavy things. It's fun to drive. And this is what they get. Now it's cool. There's no mistaking that. Well. That actually might be going a little far. What they actually get is this. They still have to put it together themselves. Well, actually, what they really get is this. <laughs> because it doesn't even actually come with instructions. It's just assumed that you're an enterprising person. You, you, you can figure it's got little bumps and they click together. Go make yourself a bulldozer. You'll enjoy it. It can be any kind of bulldozer you want. It could be a dragon, whatever. Um, this, for those of us who are full-time, hardcore, we like to go build stuff, we get hired to build stuff, people, this it just looks messy, not terrifying or daunting. We go, oh, well, that needs to get sorted. Maybe, the, you know, the colored pieces go over there and, you know, the windows go over there. But the underlying problem that new arrivals to the Drupal world don't really get any guidance about how this giant bin full of Lego bricks of, you know, content types, fields, views, build modes, display modes, um, feeds, blocks, menus, breadcrumbs, all of them are vaguely familiar to anybody who's worked with web stuff or has talked about working with a web publishing system, but figuring out how all of these different building blocks get combined into an actual coherent whole is something we don't give anyone much actual, we, we don't really demonstrate that much. Has anyone here ever installed Drupal and used the standard install profile? I said used the standard install. <laughs> Okay, Larry is going to be our outlier for the afternoon. Um, Wait, with or without additional logic? Just core. You installed Drupal core. You used the standard install profile. And it was excellent. <laughs> I was with you until the last part. Yeah, it, it's basically the world's most complicated version of WordPress out of the box. Which is sad because that grossly undersells what Drupal is capable of. I think it, like everybody here in the room is probably familiar with you, the fact that you can build big complicated things with Drupal. Um, 
But there was a really, really interesting post a while ago um, by someone named Stevie who basically ranted vigorously about Google's platform. Um, this was during the days when, you know, Google Plus was very, very new and oh, there was all kinds of debate about this wild new platform that they were creating. Um, and he, one of the things that he said was that simply making something a platform you can do a lot of stuff with does not guarantee success. That is not like there the population of people who go, aha, a new kit with which I can build crazy things. Excellent. Those may be our people, but that's not a very big slice of the population. There has to be some sort of killer app, some sort of thing that people engage with and say, oh, this is what's on the other side of figuring out how to click all these pieces together. This is something that's useful. I could actually do something with this. That killer app, um, in the case of Facebook that he was talking about, um, it was photographs and the wall of your friend's updates. You know, f Facebook has this huge, rich platform, but still roughly 45% of people's time is spent clicking next on a photo album because that's what grabs people. And the fact that that was built on top of the Facebook platform was a killer app that uh, gave them something to build on and extend from rather than just saying, ta-da, big social graph. You should totally do something with this. So that brings us to the philosophical question of whether or not we should do something like that with Drupal. I'm going to say yes and just move on. If there are any objections to that, feel free to register them on Twitter. Um, but there actually really has never been too much disagreement about the idea that Drupal should be in some way useful out of the box. Like, there's never been a whole lot of support for the idea that it should just be utterly stripped down to bare metal and do nothing. And I, I hear a, a but. Well, yes. <laughs> Perhaps there is a but. The problem is, is once you start actually asking, okay, let's make a really cool, engaging thing that Drupal could just do out of the box, there's an entire world full of people who use Drupal, an entire universe full of potential use cases, and how do you possibly choose? Because for a long time, we've said, no, 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 the standard install is literally for everyone. But that makes it so generic that what you get is the standard install, the world's most complicated copy of WordPress with a feed aggregator built in. You know, it, it's a function, it, it's full of functionality, but there isn't any particularly compelling story about what you're going to do with standard install other than turn off some of the stuff and go build your actual website. Um, about two years ago, did anyone hear, um, there's been there's been debate and heated vigorous discussion around the idea of making Drupal's install profile out of the box do really cool things and serve a particular use case. Um, but the argument is always boiled down to which one of those use cases it should be. You know, um, it, will it be a personal portfolio site? Will we try to show off some sort of like small business website or something like that? One of the big problems is is you had to actually be able to build it with core in order to ship it with Drupal, which was no small feat in and of itself. Um, and then there were some crazy people who argued that you should actually just strip everything out and leave it bare metal with a 404 page, and that would be Drupal's default state. No one listened. It's probably for the best. Um, but again... Where are they now? <laughs> it's called Symphony now. Yes. Um, but... About two years or so ago, a lot of conversations started rolling. I'm biased because I started some of the conversations um, about something called Snowman. Um, it's a slightly ambiguous name. It was originally named Tsunami. Um, the idea of, you know, it would just, it would be the, you, some sort of install profile that could like, you could start a movement with it or whatever. Unfortunately, roughly 45 minutes after that was announced at DrupalCon, a tsunami killed several hundred thousand people. <laughs> Changing the name really felt like the best move. Um, but Snowman works too. It's still water related, roughly. <laughs> um, 
But the idea was that rather than try to have some sort of gigantic, huge, all-encompassing community discussion about what the most fundamentally perfect representation of Drupalness would be and how do we make that into an install profile or whatever, um, a couple of us just wrote a description of what, the, what a use case could be that would cater to Drupal's, Drupal core's out-of-box strengths and actually be an interesting kind of website to have and to use. A use case that we could actually explain to someone and someone might actually care about. Um, at the time, the idea was that basically the audience for this would be a small group of people, a small team, you know, friends, whatever, who were collaborating together on some kind of project. And they wanted to tell the world about that project. And they also wanted to invite and encourage other people to come in and join them in working on it. Coincidentally, this sounds not unlike trying to run a small open source project or something like that. Um, we may collectively have a little bit of experience doing that. So it's also useful because it's a kind of story about what this example install profile, the site that it would make, what it would be used for. It's a story that I think we can probably kind of understand. It doesn't take tons of work to get in the mind of some people working on a project that they want to evangelize and get other contributors for. And there was briefly a great deal of excitement about this. You know, there were boffs and there were meetings and there was, you know, issue queues and stuff like that. Um, it didn't last a whole long time for a very important reason. We still had to build the damn thing with core. Um, and uh, in 2011, when this stuff was really starting to get rolling, um, there were a couple of significant roadblocks we encountered. One, you couldn't list things. Turns out, if you want to actually, you know, think about a, a particular use case, a particular kind of site, you very quickly run into things like, oh, and we could totally make a page where the news lives. I guess we can't. Um, okay, back to the front page then. You know, th those kinds of just intractable problems in Drupal core meant that either you were going to give up on it ever shipping with core, which sort of, you know, missed the whole point of what we were trying to do, or you ended up writing a, bu a bunch of custom code and jamming it into an install, install profile and basically cheating anyways. You know, you were jamming a new custom module into the install profile anyways. So this was a real problem. The other one was um, there was no way to do relationships between content types. Um, and you know, there, were, there, are, there have been Drupal modules out there like node reference and node relationship and stuff like that that could do this. Say, um, have you know, uh, an employee and an office related to each other or an album and an artist related to each other. Those kinds of things are really sort of the, you know, a, a meat and potatoes feature of a lot of websites. Um, but there was no way to do that. So there was a whole, you know, whole other swaths of functionality that were totally, totally out of our reach. Um, no way to do dates, which meant that any kind of event calendars were out of the question. No way to do links, which meant that directories of things were going to be really annoying to build. You know, this, this whole actually building it with core thing was really starting to kill the buzz. Um, then we also were thinking about the fact that if we actually made something useful, all of the tools for ad content administration that ship with core are pretty generic and vanilla too. So if you start thinking about the use case for a site where that people are actually using, you kind of want to start customizing this stuff too. Um, and then also the act of creating an install profile that actually set up anything non-trivial in Drupal 7 required tons of custom code. You were basically handwriting all of the code to go in there and build out new content types, add individual fields, set all the default settings for the site. The more functional you made it, you know, the you were signing up for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lines of custom install code living in the install profile. And that was also not cool. You know, it, making an install profile in D7 was possible, but dicey, and it required deep understanding of certain APIs. So basically, it, it was very not cool. And it got us back to, I guess we could just sort of have WordPress with forums turned on and an aggregator for some reason. You know, it, it very quickly looked like, heavy amounts of core development work were the only way that, you know, 
were the only way that this could happen. And it wasn't like, you know, people were going to put views in core or something like that. So back to the drawing board. No way. We were sad. We had many sads for a while. But then it turned out not too long ago, we sort of stepped back and a couple of us who'd been involved in these discussions started talking amongst ourselves and saying, you know, we've got views in core. That's a pretty big one. We've got entity relationships in core so we can make those content models that connect things to each other. We've got a date field. We've got a link field. There's views integration for those. We could actually do a list of upcoming events that doesn't require people to do bizarre and unholy hacks with the date posted field on a new piece of content. You could just make this stuff now. And then Views Bulk Operations, a tool that lets you make little customized admin screens and just you know say, oh, check, 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 unpublish these and things like that. That's in core. Config management, the, the config management initiative, CMI, that went into core, and it's dramatically simplified the actual process of building install profiles because most of the grunt work of, say, defining a content type or defining fields or defining a view, say, um, gets stored in config files. They can now just be moved over and into an install profile directory, and it becomes something that that install profile can in initialize without using a bunch of custom code. So that problem is, at the very least, reduced dramatically, um, suddenly we've also got abilities like the ability to do custom entity display modes. Like, well, I've got a, I've got a staff bio. I could actually make a bunch of different ways that this could appear throughout the site. You know, I could have the page where that person's bio lives. I could have a different something else for the staff photo gallery. You know, there's a, a much richer vocabulary sitting right in Drupal core for building this kind of stuff. Uh, the front end and back end themes are responsive now. We've got fieldable blocks, so you could actually use a picture in a sidebar block. It's a <gasps> novel. I know. It's like, ah, it's 2013. It's amazing. We've got the editorial, like, the, the list keeps going on and on down there. Now, there are, there are other debates about whether or not this is making core bigger and heavier and stuff like that. But, unarguably, the, vo yeah, the, the vocabulary that ships with Drupal core at this point is, for the first time in history, rich enough to describe and implement the functionality of a lot of different kinds of interesting and useful websites. This is like the dawn of a new era. And once everyone actually manages to like get themselves over the shipping Drupal 8 hurdle and sobers up and comes back from the long and well-deserved vacations and starts working on Drupal 9, um, you know, I, I, the, the ripple effects of this stuff being baked in rather than something that people have to go out and discover after learning basic Drupal vocabulary. And then they go out and they find the contrib module repository and then they download stuff and then they break everything and then they... Because, because this is cool, but this has made the pile of Legos only bigger. Bigger. So the takeaway today is a kind of shocking and suddenly unexpected, we could actually just build that use case that we were talking about. An install profile for a team of people that is doing an open source project and wants to tell the world about it. We could just build that, like today. It would probably break because Drupal 8 is in alpha, but that's alpha breakiness, not we had to do crazy things breakiness. So stepping back two years into the Wayback Machine, and this is also where you can start feeling, feeling very free to just like throw things or object or pause and say, I think that's a terrible idea, and we will attempt to rebut you in a gracious and friendly fashion. Um, the core principles that we were talking about at that point um, for an install profile that could ship with core that would do something useful. The first one was before any other things, you know, before like giving people an example of how to use this API or demoing Drupal or whatever, 
make that use case and actually serve the needs of that use case that we described. Like as if we actually were trying to ship an open source product for small teams trying to tell the world about their project or whatever. Don't just treat it as like the, the Northwind database of Drupal, purely useful for saying, oh, well, you need to do X, go look at this example in the snowman profile. That's useful but it's a secondary concern. The idea of showing off Drupal capabilities and saying, oh, well, let's walk through this feature demo of Drupal in the form of this install profile. That's not the goal because that also leads to massive feature creep. You get like the Frankenstein monster install profile whose only purpose is to show off all of the check boxes and all of the features and stuff like that. That doesn't necessarily help anyone. So we can show off Drupal capabilities, but that's a second you know, priority. And then the third priority is like, teaching site builders how to build things, showing them an example of how you might assemble things. They could absolutely learn from a pre-assembled website that already has a bunch of Drupal stuff clicked together and built, but that isn't the inherent primary purpose of it. That's a happy accident. It's, you know, it would probably be less complicated than logging onto a client site and clicking around to learn how Drupal is built because it would be a simpler site. But again, there's that priority list of, you know, what things we consider first. And then finally, it wouldn't be intended as a starting point for custom site builds. This wouldn't be like the... The Zen of install Yeah, it, it would not be the Zen install profile. You would say, well, I want to build a site, and it's kind of community-ish, so clearly I'll start with Snowman. No, I mean, it, that, that again, not the idea, because that raises all kinds of questions about, like, you know, what crazy use cases could we imagine this being extended for? Way too complicated. Serves that use case. It would probably, if someone really used it, they would probably eventually start adding things to it. But like, it's, the goal isn't to be, as you said, zen. So, going back to that, with those principles, with all of these new cool Lego bricks we've got in Drupal 8, a small group collaborating on a project they want to tell the world about. They want to convince others to join in with them. Let's say Alice and Bob are making a new CMS. <laughs> I, it seemed relevant. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> so, what? <sighs> so the first question is, and this is sort of the process that we go through with client sites too. You know, what do they need their site to do? What job are they hiring their website to perform for them that this would need to perform? And like, what kind of discrete things would it need to do? And this is. For those of us who are used to thinking in terms of like, okay, what are the feature checklists? We'll tick this off, we'll tick this off, we'll drop this module in. This can be a bit of a shift to thinking in this way. We're not thinking about features, we're thinking about jobs that this website will be asked to perform that may, they, they, they'll, they'll take the form of different features or content types, but uh, we'll get there later. So the first one, again, with this, uh, new unnamed CMS, is to share some sort of vision. Like, why are we doing this? What is this about? What is its purpose? You know, what's the plan? Stuff like that. You know, any open source project that, you know, people want to, you want people to start getting involved, there's got to be some sort of mission and vision that gets conveyed. Um, the other one is building trust. You know, one of the big challenges for an open source project that's, you know, ramping up is getting people to say, yes, okay, this looks legit. Uh, it looks like, you know, people are having some success with this. I'll try it out. So that's one of those, like, jobs the website is supposed to perform, getting people to take that sort of step of trust of even saying, I'm going to spend my next two hours tinkering around with this. I'm, I'm spending my time on this, so I need, I need some degree of trust. And the other one is encouraging participation. You know, it, it, the part of the job of this website is getting other people to say, yes, I will start investing my time. What is that next step? You know, how can I, how can I get involved? So these are like 
three core jobs that a website for our hypothetical people needs to perform. It honestly was hypothetical. Um, so I'll pause. This seems a very, this is a very quiet, although. Thank you for, thank you for bringing some levity. Um, like, are there any other kinds of fundamental jobs that a website for a small open source community would be responsible for? Let's think, this isn't rhetorical. It's, it's an Events, release it like keeping people up to date, like ongoing engage, ma maintaining ongoing engagement or something like that. Well, <laughs> yeah, all the features of GitHub. <laughs> Probably not going to happen with D8 core, but we'll see about D9. Um, any other thoughts? Oh no, we're just going to ship it. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I, I think that's a good idea. The, you know, the assumption that this would probably have to evolve over time as they figured out more needs or whatever. Um, and again, like... That's actually a very good idea because this is help. This is like providing training wheels and getting in. And what you're suggesting is that we might consider and what's next. So what yeah. is out into country or yeah, like what what are the next steps yeah. for the people who are running this website now that they've gotten and it's installed? Documentation, Documentation for the project, book module, click done. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> no CMS is gonna do that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what, what about uh, collect feedback? Oh. That's a good, uh, like, a actual, like, two-way dialogue with people, or? Well, it says, share the vision, build the trust, try it out, encourage participation. I don't know, it seems like people might have an opinion they would want to give back to them about how the CMS worked for them. I like it. <laughs> Twitter is technically not a solid feedback mechanism for most projects. <laughs> Although I hear it's how you get Dave Reed to fix, no. Um. <laughs> I'm hearing case studies, and case studies could be a way to build trust. Yeah, a, a, a showcase of people who have actually used it. It's, yeah, okay. A team page? Yeah, who is actually making this thing? Okay. Mm -hmm. I. I got to say, I'm feeling very happy about some of the answers here because I do actually have. He is one he prepared earlier. Yeah. So, you know, un under the, the core vision, like, you know, there, there's some basic, like, about information, like, what is this thing? You know, it's got to be more than just a logo and a repo. You know, what is it? Um, you know, what's our plan? What are we, you know, what are we hoping to achieve? Where are we going with it? Frequently asked questions because you literally are not allowed to put a website on the internet <laughs> without a frequently asked questions page. The internet police will come for you. That's true. Um, the team, you know, a team page, you know, bios, who's working on it, case studies. Yeah. Um, news coverage, you know, if it gets written about and people on Slashdot get angry about it or something like that, clearly, you know, you've got to mention that and tell everyone to go there and defend the project and, you know, it's how it works. Um, under enc encouraging participation, a basic, you know, how to get involved page, point to the GitHub project, whatever. Um, open forums where people can share their dissatisfaction or their encouraging stories about how it's changed their life working with the project, you know, those kinds of things. Or, you know, post spam, as they do. Um, group events, I think, uh, you know, that was mentioned a couple of times of like, you know, oh, we're, we're gonna be having a sprint or there's gonna be a screencast or the new, ver you know, the, the next release is gonna be dropping. So if you've got any ideas for what you want in, because our new CMS is, is so incredibly lightweight that just if somebody tosses out an idea for a feature, we'll just squeeze it right in before it ships. So we'll just, you know, put up a, you know, eh, on Friday, we're, we're rolling a new version, get your features in. I'm just making stuff up right now. <laughs> so, 
That yeah, that was Drupal three. Yeah, it's just everyone decided it was time to make a new round number, and that became a new version of Drupal. Yeah. Um, so what was interesting, and you know, we, we've gone through some of the same process, some of the same brainstorming process, way back in the day when Snowman was being kicked around initially, and preparing for this, and you know, it, during sleepless hours with markdown files, making notes and stuff like that. Um, this kind of set of functionality, although there were there are, there are a couple of good ones that were also mentioned that could probably be added to this documentation. Yeah, but who wants to write documentation? Yeah, <laughs> maybe documentation is good for build trust. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing is that we haven't really, other than community forums, talked about specific features yet. We're talking about tasks that the website is supposed to perform for our people, our, our Bob and Alice. So this is another one of those fun community participation times. Given the tools that we know of in Drupal 8 right now, the stuff that we just talked about is now like you know in hand, does this kind of stuff look doable? Wah, wah. <laughs> any 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 initial thoughts? Content types? I'm tricking you into actually beginning the implementation work right now. Yes? Community forums without a spam fighting mechanism is a very dangerous thing. That's why it's only for registered users. <laughs> yeah. Who would have, why, how, why would a spam bot ever register for a site? <laughs> That's a good point, though. This is something that we'll have to think about. <sighs> That's one of those next steps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so like, you know, some, okay, so I'm not sure whether the, yeah, I'm not sure which of those sections that would go in, but the idea of like, what's the selling, what's the case for how this software is good? Like, a showcase? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, I mean, I, and, well, now, now we're just into content writing guidelines, you know. Products page. Wow, who's who's ready to monetize now? <laughs> so, I I am fairly confident that barring the uncomfortable spam question, um, this is something that could probably be knocked out in D eight in a relatively short period of time. There would be tweaking to be done and stuff like that. But I don't think it would fundamentally tax a site builder's experience, you know, a, you know, a, a knowledgeable Drupal site builder, if they were comfortable installing an alpha version of Drupal and occasionally getting Ajax errors. Um, which brings us to the sort of next steps. And this is the call to wh whoever is interested and either thinks we're on the wrong path or has a different idea or, or wants to actually build this, what comes next? Um, building it in Drupal 8 is a very important next step. I mean, we, we would want to start like breaking this down into some specific content types, but there's not too many that are implied, you know, under that, under that diagram. Um, we would have to figure out how to agree that it's actually done because that's one of the problems when you get a community of people or even a small group of people deciding to add new functionality to a website. It will just keep accruing functionality until the sun burns out, but I think that's also doable. The next step is actually capturing the install profile. Again, with, with the improvements that have gone in in the CMI work, that isn't as difficult as it was, but there's still some coding. One big remaining technical hurdle 
for this entire concept of shipping some sort of usable thing in core is that some kind of not dummy content, but pre-populated content, at least in some areas, whether it's, you know, blocks that, you know, populate with, you know, are populated with certain messages or, you know, a first post pages just so that the whole thing isn't just an empty husk when it's first installed. You know, those are important. Because right, people are much, many people are much more comfortable editing something existing than the white sheet of paper. And we're giving a white sheet of paper up till now and we're making something that is uh, trying to be, uh, that has that demo content. Yeah, I know it's a technical thing to figure out, but it's pretty crucial to yeah, like th fulfilling th this vision. Yeah, that's one of the things that Core doesn't currently do. You know, there isn't a clean, easy mechanism for like just saying, here's six nodes that this install profile should just have once it's installed. It's doable, but that's another one of those places where some custom code would probably have to be rewritten to set those up. Um, rolling a release and putting it on Drupal.org as a standalone project and then submitting a patch to actually get it included in core. If it gets enough nods and, and seals of approval, compared to what, we ever, what was being talked about several years ago in terms of like making Drupal something that you could actually install and start using for a particular use case, you know, the, the, the work that was on the table two years ago to make that reality was really daunting and seemed kind of insurmountable. And now it's actually super manageable, which is cool, which is like sort of the, I think the dual message of this session. One, it's that out of box, D8 does a ridiculously huge amount of stuff. Two, we could actually start shipping actual use case tailored install profiles as a part of Drupal or even as a very, very lightweight like adjunct download for, you know, starter purposes. This is doable. It also just, it, the only real shift is we have to start thinking about those use cases rather than just thinking about them as showing off specific features. Because now we've got a list of core features that is too big simply just to show off. We could build a whole lot of stuff. Now it's right, time to think about what. The big stack of Legos, the bigger stack of Legos now kind of gives us the responsibility to help people figure something out there with, a, with, with, with an example. And this is that example we're presenting to you. You all are a quiet bunch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're just waiting for you to be fully finished. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we do, actually. Um, Roy has actually been talking about some interesting, like, philosophical questions about what Drupal has the potential to serve. Uh, do, I mean, do you want um, to... Not to put you on the spot or anything. No, but, but because we're still... We're also that platform we've discussed. Uh, so even this snowman use case is pretty much generalized, right? A group a given project with some jobs that uh, revolve around that project. Uh, but Snowman fits in the us or we use case where a group would want to get something done. There's also the I, I have a portfolio, I am a writer, I am a blogger, I am a freelance something and I need my own presence on the internet. That could be well be another example of uh, Okay, so you're a freelance photographer. That would give us the, uh, uh, a way to showcase how we could build a portfolio in, uh, in core and secondary, show off some of the new file and media handling, for example. Since we've actually got images and we can crop them and scale them. That's been It's since. amazing, Jeff. That's been <laughs> since the dark ages of Drupal 7. And uh, um, the world uh, use case I've always uh, uh, kind of envisioned as that's Drupal itself, as in world domination is a <laughs> running theme in, in what Drupal wants to achieve. Um, um, and secondary, I would see that uh, the audience there as uh, engineers, developers. So that would be a showcase for hooking up Drupal with all the other 
parts of the internet. So I, I'm not <laughs> an expert on those <laughs> parts of core, but I would imagine that uh, Drupal 10 years ago was pretty hip with having an RSS feed. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. cutting edge. And, uh, so also comments. Yes, so what's, what's in there uh, now that hooks Drupal up to the rest of the internet? I mean, so like the, the fact the that services we, yeah, the, the services layers that are there in Drupal 8, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in terms of like web apps or lightweight websites that can pull in content from a Drupal 8 website now, just based on the fact that Drupal 8 can expose its content and data as like raw JSON and stuff. That's cool. Eh, probably Bardic. It's got a bunch of regions. We can color it. We can enable color margin. It's responsive, <laughs> you know. I mean, it and I, that is, admittedly, one of the things that is, w let's say, a, a unique challenge about building something just with Drupal Core. You know, the the ability to actually make any kind of visual design decisions about what it's going to look like is very limited because we can't put custom CSS in there, you know, template overrides and stuff like that aren't really, you know, on the table. So that's that's a challenge. But I will say Bardic actually has a, a ridiculous number of ways that you can shuffle and squeeze content into its various regions and the fact that it's responsive out of the box now that that's that's cool. I'm you know. What, what's the advantage of putting it into core instead of having an install profile um, that people can download and then you can show off Drupal eight and Contrib in in one package? Because people test drive Drupal core. Maybe we should tell people not to download Drupal; they should download distribution. Well, then we're <laughs> then we're back to that whole small core thing. Um, I mean. I made the case I made that case for years. But at the end of the day, moving the needle on people downloading Drupal and trying to figure out what it does is not going to happen unless we just make it absolutely utterly unusable. Like it will punish you if you attempt to download bare Drupal, perhaps hurt your hard drive. People are going to do it. Right. I mean, it, it, it's definitely more doable now than it was two years ago. And I'm, I am deeply sympathetic to the, you know, why not just use a distro that pulls in, you know, contrib tools and stuff like that. So, so you're talking about install profiles. Let's say something like a, a piece of functionality, like an image gallery, mm -hmm. which would be a very logical thing to have Drupal do. Um, is that, is that uh, um, necessarily an install profile or is that a module that packages together a content type and a bunch of configuration? Like where's the line between that's install an profiles and modules that bundle stuff? Well, yeah, so that's a good question. Like if we were attempting to build a large scale project breaking up any of that kind of functionality into discrete modules that were responsible for all of that stuff would probably make a lot of sense. Um, I think I mean, that's something that I think we're going to have to figure out again um, with the rise of CMI in Drupal 8 because, so it, who here has been nerding out and like talking to other people about the config management initiative. Okay, roughly the percentage I ex expected, excellent. Um, basically, historically in Drupal, tons of configuration information about, oh, I put a view here, I've got content types, They're, these are the five roles that users can have, stuff like that. Um, those get stored in the database, mixed in to some extent with the content, like nodes and comments and stuff like that, teasing those things apart and figuring out how to capture all of the clicking around and configuring that you did and reuse that has been tough. Modules like features, 
lived in that space for a long time and still do in the D7 world. Um, in D8, there's a whole new subsystem whose entire job is to make sure that that stuff lives in easy, easier to distribute and easier to deploy configuration files rather than being mixed in with the database. So some of the things that drove like the proliferation of having a site broken up into like 35 different feature modules that were, you know, this one is where we exported all these views and content types. And this one is where we exported all these settings and stuff like that. Um, if features module isn't as necessary just for maintaining sanity, I'm not sure what I'm not sure where those lines will end up being drawn. Um, hopefully, the snowman install profile concept would stay small enough that it wouldn't be like hitting that, oh my god, there's 300 views, how do I keep track of them point where that usually makes sense. Was that dodgy enough? Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The, you. So I'm going to summarize this a little bit differently. Two years ago, or two and a half years ago, DuplaCon Chicago, you got up and said, this is what we need to do for core to be able to pull this off. And core development team said, challenge accepted. Yeah, I, they didn't actually literally say that at the time. They just went and started coding, and I didn't notice. <laughs> it was shocking when it happened. So uh, I'm going to put it, as, as a core developer, I'm going to put it back on you and say, yes, please, your turn. Indeed. Will you say challenge accepted back? Because this needs, you know, the, the way to deal with, you know, what's the exact scope, this needs a clear product owner to, to drive it. I nominate Jeff Eaton. <laughs> This has been the story of my week, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to do. <laughs> so, challenge accepted, Jeff? Challenge accepted. Excellent. Yay. <laughs> that was an ominous round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a kind of idea or kind of snowman, replacement of snowman, or you could say like, it might be a, Snowman sit in there. So basically, up to Drupal 7, we were selling some presets. Now, Drupal 8 is something like a, you know, like a thing that has a lot of things. You can do a lot of preset. So Snowman can be one of the preset. So imagine a world. You just go there, Drupal.r, click download Drupal. You go to a nice page where it is placed, download with preset, and select a drop down, Snowman. And it automatically checkbox all the con you know, like a core module that need for Snowman plus additional snowman stuff that can be either your views or any config schema stuff or it can be a custom module or it can be custom theme that comes with snowman. I mean, it's a snowman specific uh, and core stuff. It would be so cheesy and filled with snowflakes. It's <laughs> I, mean, I love it. Uh, so in that case, it works a lot of ways. So either you, you just select something and then uh, I want snowman plus on top of it, I want this, this, this. I can select it. It's not just restricted to snowman closely. And then I can click download and that works exactly. If you do that with some mechanism, that works for our GitHub download as well. So basically, instead of downloading Drupal.git, we may download Drupal hyphen 1000 So basically, each one represent, each digit represent your module in an order. So one means you want that module, zero means you don't want that module, and then dot git. Is he arguing for flexibility? I, I'm tempted to say challenge, <laughs> but because uh, <laughs> I just walked into it, you may have just walked. No, um, no. I mean, I, I think the funny thing is, is like around the time that Snowman, the initial ideas for this were being tossed around, like one of the other really really engaging ideas that everyone was excited about was the idea of like turning the drupal.org profiles listing page into an actual primary spot where you would go and say, oh yes, I want a Drupal that does X. I am downloading that. And you know, essentially deprioritizing the idea of the core Drupal download as what you do and you do stuff with, is what you download and do stuff with. Um, 
that ran into intractable arguments around how much do you start how you know what should live in core what shouldn't live in core i was one of the people involved in many of those intractable arguments um but to be honest it doesn't matter right like it doesn't matter because if you give an option to say that like it's again it may lead into a component based system even you have a lot of things in core if you can choose what you want it can still with stay in core the, the problem is small core I mean, I don't understand the whole concept, but I feel like the problem with small core is it's hard to maintain and keep tracking and up to date with all the other components and make sure that you do a release. It then it 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 might be, be end up with a nightmare. You cannot do a stable release because all other plugins are in a different status or has some problem. So it it still can be a big core. But if you if like if we can make it like a component based like okay I'm not going to do anything with web services so I don't want that uh, it, it's a part of core I don't want that I don't want aggregator now so would that mean you wouldn't actually get it in the download or just wouldn't yeah. be turned on yeah I the don't know if this is targeted at yeah. people who can make that yeah. distinction or decision and at and that I think point that that's got seen anything that's got a lot of infrastructure no, no, questions I, that would go along with it yeah, that me, me, mostly would I'm, have to be resolved. I'm saying in a developer perspective, but if you are not not technical person, that's where the preset come. Mm -hmm. the, so they see, okay, there, there is a separate project page for Snowman where they can see all the fancy stuff it can do. And then when they click download, we end up with the score page with the things pre-filled just for Snowman. You don't need to do anything if you don't know. Be careful. Don't touch anything. Just click download. I mean, I I I like that. It also requires. I mean, it, it's another extremely long bullet list of a lot of infrastructure pieces that need to be in place for that to be an actual implementable reality. So, I think it's a vision that I think would be cool for us to be building towards. But like in the same way that you know, two years ago, making a thing that listed things with core was <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah me at the end of the day we are same family right community we use right? php we got to deal with all those arrays that's, that's a very big family i don't want to go <laughs> that extent as a drupal thank you thank you so this might be a stupid question um could you use basically drush make files and therefore not actually put stuff in core, just have a make file list all the stuff you want to use. They don't want it in core. <laughs> no, nobody actually wants to see this thing get into core. That's, that's the <laughs> message I'm saying. Well, um, all you're putting in core is a file that says, go get this uh, make file from somewhere. And then that make file has a list of all the modules and themes and you could use any theme you like. Well, what, I mean, what is this drush? <laughs> Yeah. This is well, the audience. I mean, well, you don't actually need Drush. You just okay. need the bit that parses the make file. Well, I mean, like that's how install profiles on D. O actually yeah. get rolled. You know, you you don't actually check in copies of all the contrib modules you had. So um, isn't that a, a, a moving part in that proposal? Well, it it could achieve that because then you right. could just have, you know, base install, profile one, profile two, whatever you want to call them, demo. Mm -hmm. Maybe small, small core. <laughs> Skinny core. Um, no, I mean, I, I think I, I like all of those ideas. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges to overcome is first getting past the vision of a generic Drupal being the best, you know, foot to put forward mm -hmm. with Drupal. And... I, th I mean, it, it took a lot of back and forth. You would have arguments over, you know, if you're using contrib and there's choices, which one makes the cut and all that kind of stuff, that would, that would happen. But it just means that you're not completely limited to what's in core. You can add in a theme or, and that, that theme might be a demo theme that you know, is specific to your use case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, re the reason I say is that we, uh, I work for a media company, we have 30 odd sites. We actually do this basically in Drupal 7 uh, um, our distro is one file. But and aren't aren't, aren't, aren't those well. scenarios uh, the one that's the, that come into play after two weeks or after? 
What do you mean, sorry? After two weeks of using a snowman, you realize, oh, I'd much rather have another look. Uh, I'd like to add this. Yeah, you can stick, you can customize it, download it. Yeah, yeah, but that need, uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about n dumb normal people who probably <laughs> run into this n not before. Um, but all it's doing is downloading a bunch of stuff for you. So you can yeah, hack away if you like. Yeah. I think we're going to go out things once. This is a good beginning. I, and once I, we see this yeah. Beginning, yeah. We can learn from it and all these ideas can develop. I, I think, yeah, I think. These to me sound like framework platform <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 considerations. Uh, and a lot of which is the yeah. idea of this is also to be. Without using stat custom code, basically. That's rather than writing code to kind of do all this, you just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and ultimately that kind of an approach to functionality that people would experience as a one-step process rather than a multi-step process would require um, a lot of buy-in and a lot of infrastructure work, which isn't me saying it won't happen or it shouldn't happen, but also like as part of an iterative learning process, this is something we actually can build now and continue learning. In building towards something like that, you know, this is at least one of the baby steps towards that kind of a vision that you know, we still have to learn these lessons even if we build the support infrastructure for that. Okay. So where do I sign up? <laughs> there is an additional slide. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> um, there is no, an int. Can, uh, um, can continue the questions. I okay, yeah, the, I, I won't read the slide, yeah. but if you are interested in this kind of thing, Friday, 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 Friday. So, say for instance, we're choosing to install profiles. What's our process for beginning to decide what goes into heated it? arguments? Um, I mean, and, and again, this is the biggest challenge, like when the idea of, so what should Drupal's show, you know, showcase install profile do? It, I mean, every time that conversation has come up in an open discussion, it's ground to a halt after About the stuff it won't yeah, do, it, that we also could. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. it turns into months of those kinds of questions. And I honestly don't know of a way to resolve that other than saying, okay, no. this. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, so that's that's yes. the core principle. Oh, huh? great. Serve the use. Thanks, Serve Larry. The use <laughs> now I'm to blame. What do you yes. think I was doing? Well played. Well played, Vest. <laughs> <laughs> the Vest loves you too. <laughs> But yeah, that, that is why we need to have a product owner that Dries mm -hmm. is, will support to say, okay, what goes in, whether, you know, whether we put this field on the content type, that's the product owner's job, you just decide. Um, I'm gonna disagree with a couple of the other people. I, yes, I want this in core. I want this in core on its own, straight up, for a very simple technical reason. It serves as a, as a actual test of our install profile system? Precisely. There's probably a lot of stuff right now we think we can do with install profiles now, but we actually can't. Oh, let this people try to build a real website with it and we'll see <laughs> what gets broken. Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 take that <challenge>. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that, that can find where, do, or where does the install profile process still suck? And we've still got a little bit of time left to fix those <laughs> things. You know, it does the, that part of CMI that we think works not actually? Is it actually still require custom PHP to work? If so, let's fix that now. I'm pretty sure that Drupal Truth just tweeted at me that CMI was fully functional. <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm sure it is, but could it still be less buggy? It could be functionaler. Yes. Um, <laughs> so also, uh, feel free to fill out the, uh, the ratings on this session. Um, if you disagree with me, feel free to rate me a zero. I won't be hurt. It just means that I'll cry. Um, um, I really agree with Larry's last point there. Um, I'm just wondering if, uh, if there are all of these uh, websites that are live, um, it, just, it seems a bit strange if they all have this sort of uh, other profile hidden away in their code base that isn't being used. 
I mean, it's it's not something that, that really matters, but it, it just, uh, I don't know, I, I don't feel easy about it for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's... I mean, w would it make sense to delete it from your install if you're not going to use it, but then what happens when you, when you update? Yeah, I mean, it, it. I think it would probably be worth looking at, like, what's the raw weight of that stuff that would make this I, up, I, but I mean... Yeah, I don't think it, it wouldn't have any performance problem because... You know, it just wouldn't be used at mm -hmm. all. Um, but ideally, it also would be a very small quantity of actual code. It would mostly just be CMI export, you know, config exported CMI config data that would be the bulk of what's sitting there in a profile directory. Mm -hmm. And technically, we've got multiple yeah. profiles mm -hmm. today. Just one of them doesn't really do a lot, and one of them purposefully does absolutely nothing. Uh -huh. So... Um, and I... I just had one other point. Um, I, I think we might be moving to Drupal 7 for Drupal.org, hopefully, quite soon. Yeah, totally. Um, so is there a greater opportunity to uh, improve uh, profile stuff on Drupal.org once that has happened? Um, I can't speak for the software and infrastructure teams, um, but l like getting the D7 upgrade out the door is one of their biggest priorities because it's a blocker for working on lots of other kinds of infrastructure and deployment upgrades and stuff like that. So like that, that's, <laughs> they have not said, yes, we would like to do that thing that was just described, but you know, it, it, it's impossible until the D7 upgrade goes out just because that's a, bl a huge blocker. This evening, nine o'clock at the second floor of the Corinthia, there'll be music, drinks, and testing Drupal 7 <laughs> issue queue tools. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like a fantastic <laughs> evening? Thank you. Thank you for joining us, and uh, have a good one.